Hi, it's Barry here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a really, really cool way um, of changing the negative suggestions that have been given to us by others. Um, and, and you can use this with your clients. You can probably even use it with yourself. It's, it's something that we've probably all been exposed to. We all grew up and had things said to us. And some of those things were probably less than positive. And what we can do is to change that because a lot of times we don't realize that the self-talk that we have in our head sometimes isn't, isn't even our own voice. It's not our own suggestions. It's something that we heard long ago from a parent or a teacher or someone like that. And it just kind of repeats and over and over and over again in your head. Uh, and we believe it. So let me give you an example. Some years ago, I worked with a woman who had really terrible self-esteem and she, she'd she never really been in a relationship because she, she just didn't feel that anyone would ever love her. And so when I started talking to her and I said, well, what's, what's the big deal? What's happened? And, and she started explaining. And then she got to this point with elicitation. She just said, well, I, I just keep hearing, um, no one's ever gonna love you. You're too ugly. No one's ever gonna love you. You're just too ugly. No one's ever gonna love you. And I went, what? hang on a minute. Whose voice is that? Is that your voice or is that someone else's? And she sort of kind of stopped and thought, she watched, well, it's in my head, it must be my voice. And I said, well, listen really closely. Is that your voice or is it someone else's? And it, it turned out that it was her mother's voice that had, had told her years ago when she was a kid. And it stuck in there. And this, this, um, this suggestion from her mother, God bless her, um, had her affected this woman's life so profoundly. And it affected her self-esteem and her ability to even consider being in a relationship. And so what I did was I had her then stop and hear that voice and listen to the tonal qualities of it. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process. So what we do is we first, we identify the negative suggestion. And you might be thinking, well, how do you know it's a negative suggestion? Well, one of the ways is if when you're asking them, you know, how do you do, how do, you do this? You notice where their eyes go. And if their eyes go to um, internal dialogue, that's a real clue that something's going on there. So if they go down to AD, then you know that there's something going on there. Or they might go to auditory remembered where they're recalling what someone else is saying. So that's how you often get what the, the suggestion is. So then what we want to do is we want to change the submodalities of that. So what we do is we get them to think about, well, think about someone who you really distrust. Maybe you, someone on television or someone famous who, you, who you've seen tell such a, a ridiculous lie and they got caught out. And it, when you heard them, um, you knew that whatever they were saying was just wrong. It was just an absolute lie. And in our political situation, that's really, really easy. You know, you had a few years ago, you had Bill Clinton saying, I did not have sexual relationships with that woman. <laughs> Anyone who watched that knew that the guy was lying through his teeth. So think of someone that you distrust. And then what we want to do is we want to change the submodalities of the voice that they hear. So in this example, the, the mum's voice, we want to change the submodalities of that voice, i.e. the tone, the tone, the location, maybe the tempo of that voice to the voice of someone they distrust. So even just simply, if you say to the person, okay, so where do you hear the voice? And they say, well, I hear it over here. You say, great, bring that voice way back there. So it's way behind you. And it's really soft voice, you barely hear it. Straight away, it's gonna have a, a profound effect on whether or not they believe it or not. So we change the sum modalities of the voice that they hear into the sum modalities of, of a voice of someone they really distrust. They, they just, you know, they just would not believe it. Then what we do 
is we elicit from them the biggest lie they have ever been told. Have them recall, what's the biggest lie you've ever been told? I mean, like something that when you, you, you were told it, you kind of believed it, but then you realized it was a, a lie. And you were like really angry that this, this, someone had lied to you in that way. And it made you really angry. Can you remember something like that? Yeah, great. So we get that and we elicit the submodalities of that, the location and the color, the brightness, where they mentally represent that. So we get the submodalities of that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, what's called, map across the submodalities of the negative voice and how they think about that, how they think about the, the, this belief, the belief they've had for ages in their head that, you know, they're unlovable or whatever, or they're ugly or whatever. And we're going to use what's called a map across. Um, Basically, when you think of something, we have an internal representation of something. You, you have it in a location in your mind. So, for example, if there's so think of someone you like. Um, if you think of someone you like, perhaps you see it over here or over here or up or down or whatever. There's a, a location to it. So if you think of someone you like, just point to where you see them. Okay. Now think about someone you don't like and point to where you see that person. And you will see them in a different place. This is how your mind organizes its, itself. It's, it's an organizer system and it uses location as a, the distinction. So what we do with a map across is we take the submodalities of the, this problem, the, the, the thought that they were ugly and whatever, and we're going to push that off into the distance and have it come back like a slingshot into the location of the biggest lie they've ever been told. So what we do is, and we want to be you know, animated with this, so you say to them, okay, so you've elicited both of these things. So let's say one's over here, the other one's over here. And you say, okay, I want you to take that negative belief that you used to believe, and I want you to push it off into the distance and have it come flying back as a slingshot and see it down there in that location where, you know, it was the biggest lie you've ever been told. And when you think about it, it kind of makes you really angry. Okay, and you do that over and over, doing a break state between each one. Do that three, four, five times, have them do it, and then have it locked in that location. So that every time, and you, you know when you're done, when you say, okay, I want you to try and think about that one over here. What happens is you think about that, and bang, they go down there. So you've conditioned it in. So now we've totally changed that, and then what we want to do is we want to build a positive belief in themselves. So then we're going to use all our best hypnotic language and everything like that and build them a new reality, build them a new internal representation and install that as really positively as you can and condition it in and condition it in and condition it in. And if you do this, you are going to change people's lives. This is such a profound piece of work when you do this correctly. And it's just using submodalities um, and a mapping across in a specific manner and then building a new feeling, a new, new way of thinking about themselves. Really, really powerful technique, simple to do. Just identify the negative suggestions of self-talk, um, think of someone they distrust, change the submodalities from one to the other, particularly the tone of voice, the location and the tempo, then elicit the biggest lie they've ever been told uh, and, and, and get the submodalities of that you can do it formally, writing them down, notice exactly where that is. Then you take some modalities of the, the current belief they have, shoot it off in the distance, bring it back down here, lock it in place in that place. Condition that in a few times with a break state in between. And then, then you just build them a new future of how they think about themselves more positively, that they are lovable, blah, 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 all that sort of thing, using your best hypnotic language patterns, resource anchoring, anything you like. And you will get really, really, really profound change in your clients very, very quickly. So it's a quick, easy technique. It's so simple. Just even just sometimes just moving the direction of the voice is enough to create profound change. So play with this. Have fun with it. It's a really cool technique. And I'll see you in the next video.